Today I'm going to give you my top tips for how to get a nice, smooth, painted finish when you're painting a piece of furniture, so stay tuned. Hi, I'm Amy and I'm a painter and I also like to paint furniture and then resell it. So if you're interested in furniture flipping, check out a resource below that I have in the description. It's called a Furniture Flip Pricing Worksheet and it will help you figure out how much you can afford to pay for something and then sell it for what you're wanting to get for it. And also keep track of all the things that you're flipping and kind of start to see which things you're making the most profit on, tracking you know, your expenses and the time you spend on painting them and then how much you're able to get. And that will help you really hone in on what things are the most profitable for you. So check that out below. All right, like I said, today we're gonna dive in and talk about how to get a nice, smooth, painted finish when you're painting a piece of furniture. The first tip is about using the right tools. If you have the right tools, it'll make it easier for you to do the job you wanna do. And if you want a smooth finish on the furniture, then it helps for you to have a very soft nylon brush. A softer brush that's synthetic will help you get a nice smooth finish versus a rougher kind of bristle, natural bristle brush. Let me show you. Okay, here's an example of a couple. This is, it's just a chip brush, but it's made with natural bristles and you can see how rough they are. And they will leave more brush marks and lines than something like this, which is a zebra brush, a white nylon. These are some of the softest brushes. It's great when you're picking out a paintbrush, try and open it up and feel the bristles and see how soft they are and how, or how stiff they are. Um, you need to remember that the thicker and heavier a paint is, the, the stronger your brush needs to be. So if you're using a softer brush, then you're gonna wanna use paint that's not super, super thick. It's like, think about whether you would be able to spread wet concrete around with a feather. You wouldn't, you'd have to have something stronger than that. So, so you wanna match your thickness of your paint to the softness of your brush, but the softer it is, the fewer brush strokes you're gonna get. The next tool tip is to try using a high density foam roller. This gets the smoothest finish of all. And so anytime that I am painting something like a door or cabinet, some kind of woodwork or trim in my house, I, I will use something like this if it's a large flat space that needs to be really smooth and flat. Get a high density foam roller. There are some of these that are just regular foam and there are some of them that have a, a squared off edge. That's not what you're looking for because even that square edge will, will give you a little bit of a mark when you're rolling. Something like this that's tapered off is gonna be the smoothest. And then you wanna go in long strokes, really light. You can use this on furniture because they do come pretty small and even if the, you have spaces that are too small to fit this in, then what you wanna do is use a brush to put the paint in first in the smaller spaces and then use this even without any paint on it to just smooth all the flat spaces that you can as much as possible, especially like the tops of dressers and sides. Those are places where you're really gonna see if there's a lot of brush marks and stuff. So you wanna go across long, light, smooth strokes until you even it all out. Tip number three, and I touched on this before, that if, if you have a softer brush, you need a little bit thinner paint in order to be able to move it around easily. I'll talk for a minute about chalk paint because chalk paint has been popular in recent years and it's thick and it can show a lot of brush strokes and a lot of chalk painters like that look. I still love that look of a piece that looks like an old furniture that was hand painted by some farmer in rural France 200 years ago, you know, and if you like that look, chalk paint is great and it's thick and it's made to do that kind of look, but the good thing about chalk paint is it's, it is very user friendly and beginner friendly. It sticks really well to most surfaces without you having to get into a whole lot of priming and prep work, and so it's still good for beginners to use, but if you're trying to get a nice, smooth, modern finish, then what you need is your paint needs to be a little thinner, and so there are a few different ways to add water to help thin out the chalk paint. One of the most direct, immediate ways is pour some of that chalk paint into a solo cup or something, add some water and stir it until, until you just get a little bit of a thinner paint body. That's gonna go on better for you. The other thing that you can do, and I always keep, I always keep my spray bottle handy when I'm using any of that kind of paint. And I will often spray a little bit on the furniture before I start. It's great if you have a continuous misting spray bottle, one of these that keeps going. I don't have one of those. So if you just have a regular spray bottle, just put it on a fine setting because you don't want big splatters of paint, of, of water going onto your dresser or whatever you're painting. You want it to be a fine mist. But I usually mist the furniture before I start. I mist my brush if it's dry before I start. And a lot of times I'll pour some of the chalk paint onto like a paper plate and I will mist the top of the top surface 
just to moisten it and it helps it go on a lot smoother. If it's sticking and your brush is struggling to drag through and it's not very smooth, then put some more spray on it as you're painting it and that will help it go on smoother. Okay, tip number four, still talking about paint. Look for something called self-leveling paint. Self-leveling paint means that it is designed so that it has you know, a little less surface tension as it's starting to dry and it will relax a little bit from the lines that are in there when you're painting it on. It helps it like level out into a smoother finish as it's drying. And so there are certain paints that um, do that better than others. If, if you do reviews, you read reviews and it says that it's self-leveling or if they claim to be self-leveling, that's something that you could look for that will definitely help you get a smoother finish. There are some newer paints that uh, a lot of chalk painters and people are using that are called mineral paints and um, one that supposedly has pretty good self-leveling properties is called Melange. That's a new one. I haven't tried that one yet, but it is a mineral paint that is supposed to go on pretty smooth. So check for that and when you're uh, looking at reviews or what kind of claims the paint makes. If it says that it's self-leveling, then that is an indicator to you that it means it's going to dry smoother and have a nice flatter finish without so many brush strokes. Tip number five is to sand in between your coats of paint. This will get, this will knock down some of the highs and lows that you have and even it out and make it smoother. So what you want to do in between coats, you let it dry thoroughly and then you want to use a fine grit sandpaper. So remember in, in sandpaper, the higher the number it is, the finer the grit is, the softer it is. So you want to use either a 220 or above for between coats. You just want to lightly sand to knock off any of those high spots of the brush marks. And then you want to make sure that you get all that, all that sand and dust, all that chalk and paint dust off of there really well. And so you want to use something like a tack cloth. This is really the best thing to use if you have it to really get that off there because the dust will stick to this, this sticky cloth and get it all out of there before you do your next coat. Tip number six is to use a lower sheen of paint to hide imperfections. So, the shinier your paint is, the sheen is like how shiny or dull your paint is. So the highest sheen would be high gloss. And that one is, it shows every little flaw, every dent, every detail, every speck of dirt that gets in it. So that is not beginner friendly. And so I advise to use a lower sheen to get a lot of your little flaws hidden, including your brush strokes. And so when you're, when you're using um, something like this, especially even in a clear coat on top that you're sealing with, you can buy, used to, it used to be hard to find anything that was less shiny than a satin clear coat, but now there's a lot of matte finished clear coats that you can get. That means it's not gonna be shiny at all. It's not the same as a flat paint that feels really dry and is hard to clean. Matte means it's a, it's a clear coat that's designed to seal it, but it's not going to be shiny. And so that can cover up a lot of flaws and a lot of brush strokes and make something look really much more clean and professional and modern. Here's an example of one that you can use as a clear coat, as a top coat after you've painted. And if you're using chalk paint, you definitely need some kind of sealant, either with wax, furniture wax, or with a clear coat, because the chalk paint is not really sturdy enough without being sealed in some way. So something like this, uh, this is a matte finish, so it will hide a lot of the flaws and it will not be shiny at the end. If you like a shinier finish, then pick either a satin or a semi-gloss finish. But again, the shinier it gets, the more you're gonna see any little specks or dents or you know mistakes. And here's a little bonus tip while we're talking about sealants and clear coats. When you are using some kind of a, an acrylic or a, a polyurethane top coat, don't ever shake it. You wanna open the can and stir it with a stick because when you shake it, it'll get a bunch of bubbles in there and that will, it definitely will not dry flat. When you paint it on, it'll have a ton of bubbles and when they pop, it'll just be this very uneven, crinkly surface. It won't be flat and smooth like you want. So don't shake your clear coat, stir it. All right, and tip number seven, if all, if all else fails, if none of these sound like they're gonna work for you because you're just not real comfortable with which paints and which brushes and getting all that equipment, then obviously spray paint is an option because if you spray it, you're not gonna have brush marks because you're not using a paintbrush at all. And so spray paint, just the kind you get out of a can from a, a hardware store is, is very beginner friendly. And so you can try that, you can check out that department and they have way more colors than they used to have. They have a lot of more designer colors or things you might actually want on something in your home. You know, it used to just be kind of your basic primary colors and black and white. And 
now there's a there are a lot more pretty subtle colors that you might like what I recommend if you're going to spray paint something a piece of furniture don't pick a flat paint like I said a flat paint is going to be very dry hard to clean it's gonna feel yucky we want woodwork to have a little bit of smoothness a little bit of sheen to it so that it feels comfortable when you touch it um, and so I would recommend that you get either a satin or a semi gloss if you're going to be spray painting wood and I, th I think that you will have better luck with it really sticking and being sturdy if you get one of the ones that has a primer included some of them are designed with the primer and the paint together and that's something that's going to stay on there better probably in the long run without scratching off and stuff make sure you clean everything really well that's the best way to get the spray paint to adhere and then spray paint really does stick to almost anything it stays on pretty well so that's another reason it's pretty beginner friendly when you are spraying the thing you need to remember is it's more important to use light coats and do more coats if you need to if you go in there too heavy right from the beginning you're gonna either get drips and runs which are hard to fix or you're gonna even just get these round shiny spots that don't look like the rest of it where too much paint hit at once and so you'll see all these uneven shiny spots on it when you're looking at it in the light so what you want to try to do is start pushing and start the spray painting before you are at the front of the piece of furniture and then once it's going then you move your hand across in a long even stroke and you do that all the way across you don't want to start spraying while you're right in front of the furniture because you'll get your first big blob of spray paint on the furniture start off the piece and then move across long thin strokes let it dry and do another coat. You can always do more coats, but once you get it on too heavy, you'll know when it happens, it starts dripping and it's, it's much harder to fix it and still have a beautiful, perfect finish at that point. So less is more. Take your time, do a few more coats and it'll look better. One final tip as far as clear coating, you can use just a, um, a foam brush when you're clear coating. That works pretty well with clear coating to get, to get it on nice and smooth, and those are very inexpensive. So you can use one of those foam brushes for your clear coat or for your last coat of clear coat to try and really get it smooth. And it always helps if you put your piece of furniture between the light source and yourself, like a window or natural light, so that you can see how smooth it is and whether you have any brush strokes. You wanna see all that while it's wet. You also wanna check all the way around for drips before it gets dry. It's much, much easier to fix a drip if you catch it right when you do it instead of letting it dry and then finding it later so check all the way around as you're going check around the edges wherever you just painted the edge that you can't see is where the drips usually happen so sometimes what I'll do is put that clear coat on the top and then I'll literally just run my finger across the back edge to make sure there's not any drips over there and then let that dry so check that I hope that these tips are helpful to you to get a nice smooth finish if that's what you're looking for and I would love to hear in the comments which tips and tricks you use what works best for you what products work best for you if you know some other brands of self-leveling paint or have tried melange or which ones you think work the best work the best let us know in the comments okay and good luck on your project thanks and I'll see you next time